Hey everybody, my name is Jared Stanley and I am a Master Mason in the state of Mississippi in the United States of America. And what I want to talk to you about today is the staircase lecture or the second section of the Fellowcrafts degree. And everything I'm going to speak about is published inside of our textbook, which means that nothing I'm going to discuss is secret. However, hopefully it'll provide you with a little more information about masonry and about the Fellowcrafts degree and the staircase lecture specifically. Now, last time I tried to do this video, I got off on a bit of a rant and missed a lot of the things I really wanted to talk about. So I made a few notes this time, a little more prepared, and uh, hope that the video has a little more substance to, to it for you. So the staircase lecture has a lot of different sections in it, if you will. Uh, you could study and learn how to give this lecture in individual segments. Uh, so even though the entire thing is one big lecture, uh, I'm going to try to break it down into these different sections. Now, the first thing that you're told when you come in is that Freemasonry is considered under two denominations, operative and speculative. And I think that means a lot. You know, it's right at the very front, uh, so it has some emphasis, but at the same time, you've got a lot more of this lecture to go. And by the time you get to the end, you've probably picked up on some other things that were meaningful to you, and you might not have remembered that right at the very beginning, you were told that Freemasonry is considered under these two different denominations. And I think it's important because we have to realize that Freemasonry recognizes the difference between operative masonry and speculative masonry. Operative masonry being the actual stonemasons uh, going out and doing the work of constructing a building. And speculative masonry being that sort of inward thinking about masonry and how we can take the lessons of how to construct a, a proper building and how we can better construct our lives and our individual persons. So it's important to realize that masonry makes that uh, that definition between the two so that you can better understand where masonry came from and where it is today. The next thing uh, you're told, well actually a little bit later, is that you're going to go up a flight of winding stairs consisting of three, five, and seven steps. Now typically this is a symbolic uh, stepping, but at the same time uh, it's important for you to uh, imagine this, I suppose. When, when I give the lecture, I, I actually imagine this winding staircase standing in front of me, and I think it helps a lot with the imagery because we're talking about stepping through life and uh, stepping through segments of uh, learning, and I think it's important to keep that imagery in mind. It's particularly that area why we call this the staircase lecture, uh, but at the same time, it's symbolic. Uh, and not just in the sense that you might not be actually transversing a staircase during your lecture, but because the imagery means something. So keep that in mind. One of the other things that you're going to be told is about the five orders in architecture. Most specifically, the Ionic, Doric, and the Corinthian. Now you're told that the Ionic <clears throat> is a symbol of wisdom. And if you go back and research about the orders in architecture and, and the ones that, uh, that are specifically mentioned, you can start to understand you know, how were these columns instrumental in changing architecture, changing the way that humanity as a whole constructed buildings. And you can really start to understand why the Ionic was a wise thing to be constructed. Now the Doric, well, let me take this another step further. Um, you're given direction about where these pillars stand in the lodge and who represents these pillars. And you're going to have to start picturing a lot of different degree work coming from uh, different degrees in here for all of this to start to meld together and make sense. But if you consider that the Worshipful Master in the East represents the Pillar of Wisdom, you can start to think about how that would make sense. Uh, you were told in another lecture that um, King Solomon of Israel, uh, King Hiram of Tyre, uh, and Hiram the widow's son, the architect of the temple, um, sat at these different stations within the lodge. And if you think about how King Solomon had the wisdom to contrive that, that he came up with the ideas or was inspired by uh, God 
for the idea to create the temple, then you can start tying together these different lessons that you have and understand why the pillar of wisdom is the Ionic pillar. So then we can keep taking that further and you see that the Doric is described as a pillar of strength, not just because of its architecture or the operative side of masonry, but also on uh, the contemplative side because if you look at Hiram of Tyre, he helped provide the financial support that was needed to be able to construct the temple. He had the strength to, to support it. So I think that you can start again tying some of those things in. And then by the time we get to the uh, Corinthian, which is a very beautiful, well elaborated uh, pillar, that you see that situated over in the south. And as we think about uh, the architect of the temple and his ability to make it beautiful and make the designs, then we can start tying in that as well. So don't always take something that you're told on the surface. Start thinking about where else did this tie into another lecture or what else can you learn from this because you're just never going to be told everything entirely up front. Uh, it has to rely on you to be able to reach out and make some connections to reach out and understand something a little bit deeper. You're also told about the five sense of, senses of human nature. And you're told that the first three that were mentioned, hearing, seeing, and feeling, are most important to Masons. And if you take the time to uh, learn the lecture or go receive it <clears throat> from someone else so they can teach it to you again, I think you can make the connections to understand why those three senses in particular matter the most to a Mason. Um, you're also told about the seven liberal arts and sciences. And rather than spell them all out to you, we'll focus on the two that are focused in the lecture here in Mississippi, and that is geometry and astronomy. Now there's one line here in particular that is my favorite in the entire degree and inside of this lecture, and it's probably right near the top of my favorite line in all of masonry. And it says, in fine, geometry is the foundation of architecture and the root of mathematics. Now later in this degree, when you receive the charge, you were told that uh, geometry is the basis of the superstructure of Freemasonry. It, it's, it is the foundation. It's what everything else is, is built on. And if you take the time to think about it, if you take the time to start trying to piece things together and say, well, if geometry is supposed to give me a better understanding of how better to live my life and how better to conduct myself as a person, then you can understand why it would be uh, the basis of the fraternity. And, and it's just a neat little uh, double wording there, uh, the foundation of architecture, the root of mathematics. I don't know why, but that, that sentence there speaks to me and uh, I'll, I'll remember it uh, forever even if I forget the rest of the lecture. The next thing you talk about is astronomy. Now, we happen to live way out in the country, so it's easy for us to walk outside and see the stars um, without any problem whatsoever. And if you ever get the opportunity, in case you live in the city or someplace where it's not so easy for you to do so, to really just stop. And I'm talking, take an hour, not two minutes, and look up at the stars and consider a few things. Um, take out your iPhone or whatever phone you have or go online before you go outside and and learn a little bit about what's actually up in the sky before you go out there because just for example uh, Jupiter has been in the sky here lately and if you sit back and see just this little tiny star sure it looks brighter than most of the other stars but it's a star but then when you realize that it's actually a planet and it is a planet that is so much more massive than planet Earth. It can really start to put into perspective for you just how big the universe could possibly be. Uh, I mean, it's really hard to even try to grasp the size of the galaxy, let alone the universe. But it's because of geometry that we're, what we're being taught here is that it's because of geometry that we can really understand these things. Uh, because of geometry, we can make the measurements that are necessary to understand 
how planets move or why in one time of the year there's a certain constellation and another time of the year there's a different one. Uh, how we can go out at a certain time of night and make an observation of a star and then come out a few hours later and it's a different place in the sky. And by making these observations, we really do have to sit back and just be at awe and understand that this was the creation of divinity and really take the time to contemplate that and if that can be done on such a massive scale surely we can take care of things on our own personal scale uh, and do our best to emulate the grand design okay so that's my little spiel uh, for as little as it is about the staircase lecture there is so much more uh, that I appreciate with this. Uh, some of it would have to be uh, spoken to a brother inside of a lodge because that's just the way that it is. Uh, however, others of it are just so far in depth and so far, um, you know, one thing leads to another type of situation that it would just take hours of video to try to take up. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video and we'll see you next time.